Hey guys, in this video we're looking at slope of a line. Um, this is a topic that's going to keep coming back in mathematics. Uh, ends up being the entire basis of first quarter calculus, so it does end up being a, an important one. Um, slope is defined as the vertical change or the horizontal change, or you might remember from some high school math class, rise over run. And so if I have this graph here, and I look at these two points, um, the run, so that's our horizontal change, and then our rise is our vertical change. And for me, I always kind of do, I always go to the right, so the run is positive. And if my slope is positive, it's going to go up. If my slope is negative, it's going to go down. So I just kind of showed on this picture, um, the run on this would be 1, 2, 3, and that's the right here. The rise would be 1, 2, that's right here. So then my slope for this particular line would be, for every 3 to the right, it goes 2 up, or a slope of 2 thirds. Um, the first actual example is kind of using this, but drawing our own. So this goes, uh, find the slope of the line through the following pair of points and draw a line through the points. So I'm going to do this two ways because I also want to kind of point out the slope formula up here. So this is good for when you have ordered pairs and you're not graphing. So I'm going to do it like without a graph and then I'm going to do the same problem with a graph just to kind of show two, two different ways to look at it depending on what you're given as a prompt. Um, so this would be like my x1, y1, and this would be like my x2, y2. And so this stuff is just saying we have some ordered pair x1, y1, and some other ordered pair x2, y2. And if I do this to it, change in y over change in x, that's going to give me my slope. So kind of the way I look at it is it's uh, y2 minus y1. So if I'm looking at my ordered pair, I just go, okay, y2 minus y1. And really easy sign error to make there. You notice as I'm writing it down, I'm saying, so 2 minus, it's about to be a negative 2, but I don't care, I'll, I'll clean that up on my next line. I always write that minus so that I kind of get to see the double negatives, and that seems to cut down my errors. <clears throat> and then for the x's, it'll be x2 minus x1, so 4 minus negative 1. And then 2 minus negative 2 would be a 4, and then 4 minus negative 1 would be a 5. So when I graph this, I should see my slope is 4 fifths. So I'll come over here and go, when x is negative 1, y is negative 2. And when x is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, y is 2. So then, I'm just going to use the graph to kind of confirm this slope. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right there, and 1, 2, 3, 4 right there. And so there's our 5 fourth slope, or analytically there's our 5 fourth slope. So if we have a graph, or we're plotting it anyhow, I just grab the slope off the graph, I think it's easier. Um, but you don't always have a graph, or the numbers aren't something nice, and then that's where you can use this algebraic definition. So these next two are kind of the, uh, the exceptions. Um, these are horizontal and vertical lines, and so this time we're given <coughs> a graph and asked to find the rise over run. Actually, I think we're just asked to find the slope, but uh, to me it makes more sense if I set up the rise over run, so I did that. Um, so for this horizontal one, you can look, I can pick any two points on the line, it wouldn't matter. Um, I'll just pick those ones, for just because. And you can see I have all kinds of run, right? In this case, like my run would be three, just making that up. I could pick four or negative three, it wouldn't matter. But here's the important part, is my rise is zero. This thing doesn't go up or down, so the y never changes. And so for a horizontal line, the slope is always gonna be zero. If you think about, you know, if you're hiking on something flat, you would say the slope is zero, because there's, there's no slope. Um, vertical line is all slope. So with this one, we have, um, all kinds of rise, you know, if I was looking between those two points, I could say my rise was three between those. But then when you look at the run, right, there's no run. And what that does is gives you division by zero, and that is undefined. Um, I believe on the computer it has type undefined. Uh, the other one they sometimes use is does not exist DNA, but I think they used undefined this time. So those are kind of the two funny ones. Um, so horizontal zero, vertical then undefined because of the division by zero. Okay, these next three are ones that if we're in a lecture class, I would have you try. And so um, let me do, I'm going to do number four at least. Um, 
I'm going to show it kind of the long way using the points and then confirm with the graph. And again, on the homework, you don't have to do that, but there's places where you will, so I'm just trying to get those examples in. So if I go y2 minus y1, so just kind of thing like that, negative 7 minus 3, and then x2 minus x1 will be 2 minus negative 1. And that's my slope. And then slope gets abbreviated m. I don't know why it's m, but it is. And negative 10 over 3, it looks like, is what I should get when I graph over here. So if I try to confirm that using my graph, when x is negative 1, y is 3. And when x is 2, y is negative 7, which I believe is right there. Yeah. So that is going to be... We're going to go right 3, and then we're going to go down 10. And if you count that, it should be, that should be 10, and then this should be 3. And so notice when I'm going down, I call that negative 10, because I'm going backwards 10. I'm going from 3 to negative 7. So if I thought of a number line, I'd be going to the left. Um, this next one, so let's go ahead and get this graphed. And you can see there's kind of a funny thing happening there. I guess I'll go ahead and set it up this way too. So negative 2 minus 3 over 4 minus 4. And that's going to be negative 5 over 0. So we can kind of accept, uh, expect a vertical line here because we're getting that undefined slope. So if x is 4 and y is 3, that would be right here. If x is 4 and y is negative 2, that would be right there. And there's our vertical line. Okay, and then this next one, um, I'll go ahead and finish it out this way also. So we'd have 3 minus 3, so you can kind of see it's going to happen already, and then 1 minus negative 2. And I'm getting 0 over 3, or 0. And so this one I'll expect should be a horizontal line. So if x is negative 2, y is 3. And if x is 1, y is still 3. And so there's our horizontal with a slope of 0. Um, these are the ones, so this side would go back to me doing them on the board. Um, graph the line with a given slope and y-intercept. Okay, so um, our y-intercept, we're going to pick up y equals mx plus b here pretty quick. Um, and so b means the y-intercept of the graph. Um, on this one, they're not quite having us write the equation yet because that's the next section. But just to introduce, this is where we're going. And so if we're trying to write this equation, which is really the, like I said, 2.6, um, we're pretty much right there. That would be the equation of the line. We go back to doing a table, what have you. But with this, we're trying to learn to graph using slope and intercept, which is a much better way to graph than all that plugging in points that we just saw in the last section. Um, so I'll start on 2, because I know that's my y-intercept. And then if my slope is 3, that gives me the directions to my next point. So when you have a slope that's a whole number like that, it can help to write it, or at least think of it, as over 1. So then your rise is going to be negative 3, so we're going to go down 3, and we're going to run 1. So from here I go down 1, 2, 3, and then I run 1. And then that would be my line. So this one's graph the line, then name the slope and y-intercept by looking at the graph. Okay, well, you know, what they're trying to get you to do is make a big old table here and then graph it and then use the graph to figure out that that's the slope and the y-intercept. Instead, let's just say, you know, like I said, we're heading into y equals mx plus b. This number on the end, that's going to be your y-intercept if it's all for y. And then the number in front of the x, that's going to be your slope. Um, so that's definitely the, the better way to get there than graphing it and, and checking it. Um, and so we're going to start on 3. Our slope is a half. So again, on the rise over run, this means we're going to rise 1 and then run 1, 2. And our line would look like that. So rather than, like I said, reading it from the graph, it's much easier once you realize that that's the equation. That right there is your slope, and that's going to be your intercept. Um, for this one, find the slope and y-intercept for the line. Okay, so now I got the graph. So I can see right there, that is my y-intercept. So it's going to be at 1. And then um, my slope, you just want to find two convenient points. And often the y-intercept is one of them. And you look right here, 
and that looks like it's going through. So you can kind of see if I keep extending this line, it looks like it's going right one and down two, right one, down two. And so if I think of that as rise over run, um, I'm going one to the right, and I'm going down two. So that's going to be negative two. And you don't want to put your slope in like that because negative two over one is not simplified. So you just want to type negative two, but that can be helpful for graphing. Okay, and these next few are um, matched examples that I would have you do in class. So graph the line with a given slope and y-intercept. So we're going to start on b is 1. And then, um, I don't like the slopes written that way. So I, I, I tend to like them as the over-under fraction. It's easier to see the rise and run to me. So this says we're going to rise negative 3. So 1, 2, 3. And we're going to run 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And that would be our line. So to me, this is, again, even if we had the equation, which this is going to turn out to be x plus 1, um, once we kind of formalize that y equals mx plus b in the next section, if you think about like what we had to do, plugging points into this, you can plug a 4, get a negative 3, plus 1 would be negative 2, um, and, and kept sort of generating these points using a table, uh, it's pretty easy to either make a mistake on one of them, or it's just kind of a pain in the butt to plug them all in. But once we can graph where we go, okay, hey, this it's going to start on 1, it's going to go over 4, and it's going to go down 3, that's a much, much easier way to graph these. So that's kind of what we're trying to get to. Uh, this next one, same idea. <clears throat> uh, B is negative 4, so that's where we're going to start. And then our slope is 2 thirds, so there's our run and our rise. So we're going to rise 1, 2, and we're going to run 1, 2, 3. Much easier to graph. And then these two are also ones that have you do. So here we're going to graph the line, give the slope and the y-intercept. Yeah, we're going to just give the slope and y-intercept from the equation because that's much simpler. So right there again is our slope, so negative 2 thirds. And right here, b would be 4. And then once I have those, I can just come up here and say, okay, so there's 4. And then my rise is going to be negative 2, and my run is going to be 3. So I'm going to count over 1, 2, 3 on my run, and then rise negative 2. And then for this one, m is 2, and b is negative 4. So I'd be starting down here at negative 4. And there's that whole number again that can kind of mess you up. So think of it as 2 over 1. And then you can see your rise and your run a little bit clearer. So it's going to rise 1, 2, and run 1. So it should look kind of like that. Okay, these two I also have you do. So we're going to go from the graph to the information this time. So there is our y-intercept right there. So that's going to be negative 2. And then our slope, again, we just want to look for any two points that seem convenient. And right there looks pretty good. So that's going to give me a, um, it's going down, so that's going to be a negative 2. And then to the right, and so that will be a positive 3. And so then um, m is going to equal rise over run, or negative 2 thirds. Uh, this one, looks like our intercept is at 3. And I think our next point is right there, and it looks like it's going four that way, and then one up. So that's going to be one fourth. Okay, and then the last thing in the section is um, parallel and perpendicular slopes. So two lines are parallel if their slopes are the same. Two lines are perpendicular if their slopes are reciprocals with opposite signs. And there's this little definition here that they have to multiply to negative 1. Um, th this, that's not very nice to work with this one. So basically what this whole reciprocal with opposite signs means is if your original slope was, say, 2 thirds, then the perpendicular slope would be negative 3 over 2. So you flip it over and you change the sign. So if I was given negative 3 over 2, I'd flip it over and I would get positive 2 thirds. Um, and if you notice, those do multiply negative 6 over 6, which would be negative 1. It meets the definition. Um, this is just kind of harder to spot them with. So just think of it as flip it and change the sign. 
Uh, so the question goes, find the number, or find, sorry, find the slope of any line A parallel and B perpendicular to the line through the points that. So basically, if I know this slope, then the parallel slope is the same and the perpendicular slope is going to be the flipped over one. So I'll just kind of, um, and this is one where, see, I don't have a graph. So this is where it's useful to go x1, y1, x2, y2, rather than trying to get a graph and then count it from there. So uh, 2 minus a negative 4, so y2 minus y1, and then x2, 6 minus, and then positive 3. So that will be 6 over 3, or 2. So um, m is 2, m parallel, and parallel sometimes you'll see denoted um, with two little parallel lines like that, would also be 2. And then M perpendicular, and that one looks like an upside down T is the shorthand. Um, so that's where if our slope is 2 over 1, then our reciprocal is 1 half and make sign, change the sign to negative. So negative 1 half. And then this last one is kind of the, the matched one I would have you try. So we'll go again x1, y1, x2, y2. So we go y2 minus y1, and then x2 minus x1. Lots of signs, so just write down exactly what it is. Negative 1 minus, and then negative 5. And a lot of times people forget that minus from the formula when the negative's coming up. So this is going to be negative 5, and then this is negative 1 plus 5. So that is going to be over 4. So m of these two points is negative 5 fourths. Um, M parallel will also be <coughs> negative 5 fourths. Oops, parallel. And then M perpendicular is going to be a uh, reciprocal opposite sign. So that'll be positive uh, five, uh, 4 fifths. Cool. And that wraps up uh, slopes of the line.